Hello everyone. In today's video, I have a pattern review for you. And this is in preparation for a sew along that I've prepared that's gonna be releasing on my YouTube channel really soon. We're talking about Vogue 1933. Now this one is for my advanced beginners. So if you already know how to sew and you have a good amount of experience under your belt, then you should be able to follow along and complete the project. For those of you who have taken my online sewing course, Learn to Sew, Mastering the Basics, and you've been sewing and practicing, you too should be able to follow along and sew the dress. So in today's pattern review, I'm gonna talk to you about the pattern. We're gonna go over the fabric options, and then I'm gonna share some of the supplies and tools that we're gonna be using to sew the dress. If you're part of my private email community, then you've already received the email with all of this information and links to the pattern, fabric, and then some of the, the supplies that you're gonna need to sew the dress. If you're not part of my private email community, tap the link in my description box that says join my community. And then you will get advanced notice before I post these videos on YouTube so that you can be prepared in advance and ready to sew when the videos are available. All right, let's get started. So let's take a look at the finished garment first. And here it is. I actually chose this pattern to wear as a shirt. I wanted a long shirt to wear over my leggings and this one was just perfect. So that's why I chose it. I'm not sure if I'll wear it as a dress, but I did style it as a dress so that you guys can see, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. So let's take a look at the pattern. Here, view A is the shorter version and that length is perfect for a long shirt. And then view B is the maxi length. And then both shirts are identical in terms of sewing. The only difference is that you have that long slit on view B. Now, the different thing about this pattern is that open sleeve. There is a button placket at the underarm and you can wear it open as you can see there with um, the cuff. It has a very long cuff. You can see how long that sleeve is, but there is the button. You can see the button placket there, but the cuff is very long and I wasn't sure about that. I decided to just sew it as is and then roll up the cuff if I wanted to. So here you can see a picture of what that button placket looks like underneath. I think it's a nice detail. Okay, let's take a look at the back of the envelope. So we have the description there. And then for the fabric options, they recommend poplin, linen blends, cotton shirting, and sateen. And then for interfacing, a lightweight fusible. And lightweight because this dress should be sewn with a lightweight fabric. Now, the fabric I chose is from Melanated Fabrics and I fell in love with it after I saw Brittany J. Jones post a picture of her wearing this in a dress that she made. And oh my goodness, I love it. I love the drape. The drape is perfect for this dress. It's very lightweight. But the main thing is, look at that. When I saw the model with that fabric, I wanted something very close. And I don't think I could have gotten better <laughs> other than finding the identical fabric. So that was a win. And then for my interfacing, I want to introduce you guys to the company that I use for my interfacing. It's fashionsewingsupply.com and they have professional grade interfacing. And so I'm using this Pro Sheer Elegance interfacing. It's a lightweight fusible for the dress. And it's just perfect. But I love, love, love this interfacing because of the quality. When you wash your garments after using this interfacing, you don't get that bubbling that you tend to get with the lower quality interfacing. So I really like it. And then it comes with instructions on how to use the interfacing and what types of garments you can use the particular type of interfacings that they offer when you're sewing. So I really like that. And you don't have to pre-treat their interfacing. And that's a good thing. If you've ever noticed when you wash a garment, I think I said that already, but if you ever notice when you wash a garment and it gets all bubbled, the interfacing is all bubbled after, it's because the interfacing was not pre-treated. Now, you can order a swatch set, an interfacing swatch set from this company to get an idea of what they have to offer. I think I started using their interfacings I think it was 2020. So I ordered the swatch set just to get a feel for the different 
interfacings they have. And so this is what they sent me. They put these stickers on the swatches to give you all of the information you need to know about that particular interfacing. So what type it is, what type of garments you will use it, what type of garments you will use it on. And then they give you a nice size, as you can see there, it's a nice size. And here's a look at the 10 swatches that I received back in 2020. I don't know if it's the same now, but you can check their website to find out. It's a great resource. So I recently placed an order with the company and I think I ordered about four different interfacings and this is how it comes. As you can see, they place a sticker on each piece, each cut with all of the information that you need to know about that particular interfacing as well as they, the sheet, the information sheet they give you. So I ordered some black Pro Sheer Elegance and then this is a Pro Trico Deluxe. This is for my knit fabrics. And then this is a Pro Woven Shirt Crisp. Now you will see that there are a couple of stickers on this one in addition to the information sticker. If there is any imperfection or anything about that cut that they want you to know, they will place those stickers with highlighted information. Now let's take a look at some of the extra supplies that I'm using in the sew along. These are optional, but I just wanted to show you what I'm using. So starting off with the buttons, of course you're gonna need buttons and there are 24 buttons. So yes, you're gonna be making 24 buttonholes, but it's okay because sewing one buttonhole is the same as sewing 24. It's just gonna take you more time. And this is the button um, it's from Joann's. I'll put the link in the description box, but it comes with a, a set of nine on this little card. So I purchased three sets and I'm, I love the buttons. They're perfect. Next is Fray Check. And this is a liquid that you spread on your buttonholes before you open them. So you will just spread it on both sides and that will prevent your buttonhole from fraying after you cut it open. So this is a great option. I'll place the link in the description box so that you can grab some of this if you don't already have it. Next, I'm gonna be using a point turner and I'm using the point turner to turn out the corners of the collar and the sleeve cuffs. And this is a great tool to have if you don't already have it in your sewing supplies because it helps to give you that nice pointy um, end on your sleeve or, or on your cuffs and collars. And then there's the buttonhole cutter. Now I have a set that I purchased a long time ago, but you don't have to purchase a set. So it comes with that mat and the buttonhole cutter. And the way you will use it is just place the buttonhole on top of the mat and then use the blade to rock it back and forth to cut it open and it works really well. I've had this for many years and as you can see, my mat is very worn, but it's still sharp and it works very well. It's easier than the method I used to use with two safety pins and a seam ripper. Now, if you don't have a mat, you can just use a block of wood covered with plastic and the same thing, cut your buttonhole open if you're using a thicker fabric and you're not able to cut through easily, then you can just use a hammer by placing your blade on the buttonhole and then just tapping to push through the fabric. And that works really well. You can also do that on your mat if you have the mat. I will link to the buttonhole cutter. Okay, now I wanna to talk to you about the pattern sizing. I received a question from one of my private email community members asking about sizing because she is in between sizing and there is a big gap with her sizing and her bust and hip measurement put her in two different envelopes. So I wanted to make sure that I included that information here for you because it's really important that you choose the right size when you're sewing this or any, any garment, you wanna make sure that you're choosing the right pattern size. So I will tell you that this pattern includes lots of ease. So it is really big, it's oversized. So you need to keep that in mind. And I'll give you 
an example, I am a 34 bust and 37 hip. We don't need to be concerned with the waist measurement for this garment because it's not fitted. It's, it's an A-line, so it's going to get larger at, from top to bottom. So my measurements, a 34 bust and 37 hip, would put me in a size 12 or 14. So I'm going to use a 12 for this demonstration. So a size 12 for the pattern, not the finished measurement, but just for purchasing the pattern, a size 12 is a 34 bust and a 36 hip. So when I look at the finished garment measurements on the pattern envelope, and this is wonderful. I'm so glad that the companies are starting to put this information on the back of the envelope because it is very beneficial for us to know that information before we purchase the pattern. So for the finished measurement for a size 12, the bust is 42 inches and the hip is 49 inches. So when I compare that to my measurements, the bust would have eight inches of extra ease and the hip would have 13 inches of extra ease. And I don't want that much ease in my garment, not for the fit that I desire. So I looked at all of the finished measurements for the different sizes and I chose a size six. So a size six, a size six finished measurement for the bust is 38 and a half. And that would give me four and a half inches of ease in the bust. And then the finished measurement for the hip is 45 and a half. And that's eight and a half inches of ease. And this is a much better fit for me. I would have been swimming in a size 12. So I went down three pattern sizes. Now I did make a muslin first just to make sure that I liked the fit and it was a great fit. So I proceeded with making the dress. So my recommendation to you is to take a look at the finished garment measurements on the back of the pattern envelope and compare those sizes to your measurements and then choose based on the desired fit, your desired fit, the amount of ease that you want in your dress. And then also I do recommend making a muslin because you know, if you're putting in all of this work because there are a lot of steps with this pattern, you wanna make sure that you're getting the fit that you want. Now, before you get started, you want to make sure that you pre-treat your fabric. And whenever I'm using a fabric that frays on the ends, I will use my serger to finish off the raw edge so that it doesn't tangle in the washing machine. You can use a fold over hem to do the same thing if you don't have a serger. Then I will put it in the washing machine. And yes, I do wash my fabric with other clothing and towels in my house. And you can see it comes out without that big ball of tangled mess when you are washing it without finishing the ends. And then after coming out of the dryer, same thing. It's not all tangled with threads all balled up or with the fabric all balled up with threads. And yeah, it you can see here, it is nice and straight. <laughs> it's not all balled up. I, I can't stand that. I don't like pulling my fabric out and it's a bald up mess. <laughs> so here is a look at the garment, the way I intended to wear it with my leggings and sometimes with my skinny jeans, but it's a, it's a great fit. I love it. I, I like the flowiness of the fabric. I love the length. That's exactly the length that I wanted. So although it's a dress pattern, I like the idea that I can wear it as, as a top. And then for those cuffs, I don't think I will be wearing them long like that <laughs> because I can just see if I'm out to lunch or dinner, I can see those cuffs all in my food. So I will just fold them up like that and just keep stepping. I love it. It's a, it's a great fit. I love the fabric. The colors are just absolutely beautiful. So yes, you can wear it as a top. You can wear, you can even wear it as a swimsuit cover up. I think it would look nice as a swimsuit cover up. So now let's take a look at it as a dress with the cuff or with the sleeve plaque open. I think it's cute. I think it's cute. I'm not sure if I would wear it out. I don't know. 
I'm, the verdict is still out with the sleeves open, but I think it's cute. And I think a lot of uh, ladies will like that. You've been inspired, you've been encouraged, you've watched other women sew their own garments, and you've said to yourself, I want to learn how to sew. Who's going to teach me? Well, I have exactly what you need. An online sewing course called Learn to Sew, Mastering the Basics, where I teach you, the new beginner, the person who has never even touched a sewing machine before, how to sew your own garments. And what's special about my course is I take you from beginning to end, start to finish, step by step with lots of details so that you don't get lost in the process. In this course, I teach you what type of needle to use based on your fabric choice. You will learn how to use the different cutting tools for your projects and how to sew a proper stitch based on the fabric that you're using. We take you into the fabric store and show you how to choose your fabrics and what happens at the cutting table when you purchase your fabric. You will learn how to lay out your pattern pieces onto your fabric and how to cut into that fabric for success. And of course, we show you how to use a sewing machine from beginning to end. This and so much more is waiting for you inside of my course, Learn to Sew, Mastering the Basics. Tap the link in the description box to get started. Well, that's it for the pattern review. And now that you've been equipped with all of the information that you need to sew Vogue 1933, you're ready to go. If you will be joining me for the sew along, then make sure that you grab your free sewing supplies checklist. There is a link in my description box for that, that document. And that helps you to gather everything that you will need for any sewing project so that you have everything in one place so that once you start sewing, you're not going from place to place trying to find things that you need. I find this to be very helpful in streamlining the sewing process. And I also have a video on my YouTube channel here about that. You can tap the link somewhere on this screen and there will also be a link in the description box. So grab your free PDF checklist and join me in the sew along. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.